What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can save values in Python. And to get started, you can see when we first run the program, it's going to say creating a new file. And I'm just going to show you how we can store these so that when we rerun the program, these values will always be present and we don't have to worry about inserting them every single time. So let's say we want to talk about apples and we're going to set the count to 20. So right now you can see the current values are apples and the count is set at 20. If we go ahead and print this, we are going to get 20 apples. But now let's go ahead and stop the program. And as you may have noticed, we now have a new text file. And this text file is gonna hold all of our information so that when we rerun the program, it's going to load those items and we're going to be able to pick up where we left off. So if we go ahead and click on print, you're going to notice we are still going to have 20 apples and we can also update it to, let's say, oranges. Now we print this, it's going to say 20 oranges. If we stop the program and run it again, the loaded values are going to be oranges and the count is going to be set to 20. So this is just a very convenient way to save whatever kind of values you want, and it's very fast, and it simulates the JSON kind of system where you can just use a keyword and it will retrieve the value. So it's super simple and very easy to do. So the first thing we should do is start a new Python project and I named my file main.py and the only thing we have to import is AST which is going to help us convert a string to a JSON file essentially or to a dictionary. Next we want to go ahead and create a file name for where we want to store the values and I just called this values.txt but you can name this to whatever you want. You can call it save file, you can call it anything you want. Just make sure you add the .txt extension at the end of it. So the first thing we have to do is create a function that saves the value. So we're just going to go here and type in the input value and we also want the file name of where we should insert this input. Then we're going to call with open and we want to open the file name and we are going to call the write method. So just put W and we're going to open it up as a file which I abbreviated to F. Then we're going to go ahead and F dot write and we're going to insert the input value. So if this doesn't exist, this method is actually going to just create that file for us and it's going to place it in the folder we created it, which is going to be this folder over here, our main folder. And the reason we use the with keyword is just to avoid the trouble of having to go over and close it each time we open the text file. It just saves us a line of code because this does it for us automatically. Next, we have to type in def load value because we also want to load the values when the program starts. So we're also going to use the file name here. Now we're going to do with open file name. And this time we have to call read as f. We're going to call read is going to equal f dot read. And we want to return the values that we have just read. So return read. Now the first time we run the program, we want to try to retrieve the values. And if there are no values, we're just going to create a new file. So we're going to start with a try catch block and it's going to be values is going to equal AST literal evaluation. And inside here, we are going to call load value and we're going to call our file name. And then we can print that the loaded values add a comma and add these values in case they are there. But there's also a big chance this is going to be the user's first time. So we need to create the accept block that tells them that we're creating a new file. So down here, we're gonna type in print creating a new file. And we're going to initialize the values to just an empty dictionary. So far, so good. Now let's go over the loop where we can actually store these items. So first we're going to create an infinite loop, so while true, and we are going to take some user input, which is going to equal input. And here we're just going to insert item slash slash count slash print. So these are the options the user has. If the user inserts the word count, it means we are going to update the count. So to do this, we can just create a new key in our dictionary. So to do that, we just name it whatever we want. And this is just going to be called count. And that's going to equal an input of how many. So the user can decide what amount they want to enter. Then we're going to go ahead and save the value in the format of a string. So we're just going to do string of values. And right here, we're going to go ahead and insert the file name. Then we're going to print that the current values are the ones that we've provided. So just insert the values and that will just update us 
how this was affected since we did this. L if the user input is equal to item, then we're going to call the values at the key of item. And if this does not exist yet, of course, it's going to create it inside here. So that's why we do this. And it's going to take an input where we're just going to type in what item. Then we can just copy this save value function because it's exactly the same. And we're just going to insert it right there. And we're also going to print the current values. L if the user input is equal to print. We are going to print the values at the index of count. And we are also going to print the values at the index of item. Now keep in mind that this is not a perfect program because if the user types in print before they assigned any values, this program is going to crash. So bear that in mind, I am making this only for the sole purpose of showing you that you can save values and that you can later retrieve them. But something really good to do would be to insert a try and catch block for this statement over here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create an else statement. And we're gonna type in print unknown command because it was none of these three. But now we can actually go ahead and right click on main and run it. And let's start with adding an item. So what item would we like to add? We would like to add some apples. Now we have the current values, which are apples. And we can even stop the program right here without providing a count and rerun it. And you're going to notice it's going to load the values of apples. And if we go here, you're going to notice also a text file with this provided. Now if we go back to main.py and in here we're going to type in count, we're going to say this time 100. And we can also print it and it's going to print 100 apples. Now let's update the item to bananas. And now we have item bananas count 100. We can stop the program, we can rerun it, and the loaded values are going to be bananas, and the count is going to be set to 100. And very similarly, the values.txt is also going to be updated with the most recently saved items. But that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. It was as simple as that to save values in Python. Of course, you can also go as far as using a SQL database, but I think for just one or two items, or even you can even do this with 100 items if you want, it is more than sufficient for what you need to do. But of course, your challenge is to get creative with how to make this even better and how to improve it. But with that being said, have a wonderful weekend, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.